Welcome back. It's time for business, and I'm joined by Stephen Carroll. Hello again, Stephen. Um, now, first, we're going to Brussels, where the Eurozone's finance ministers will yet again be discussing Greece and Cyprus. Yeah, that's the, those old chestnuts there. Cyprus is set to receive the first instalment of its bailout money, €3 billion, Euros, set to be approved by the Eurozone's finance ministry. It's the first instalment of the €10 billion Euro bailout we saw agreed in April. But the ministers will also be talking about Greece's next instalment of its bailout, much longer on the, ta on the bailout table. Greece has been uh, about 7.5 billion euros is what they'll be discussing handing out for Greece. You know, Greece, of course, has suffered much more during a much longer uh, recession. 25% worth of their economy has been sliced off since their crisis began there. But a sign now of perhaps a recovery, particularly in the banking sector. The Financial Times is reporting that some of the world's top hedge funds are going to invest in Greek banks because they feel with the when the recovery comes, they will make money back on Greek banks. And the banks have been at the centre of the Eurozone crisis, but the plans for a banking union might have hit an obstacle. Yeah, that's right. Wolfgang Schäuble may have some difficult questions to answer when he meets his Eurozone colleagues later. Uh, the German finance minister has been writing an article in the Financial Times about this. He said that EU treaty changes might be needed to bring in the single resolution mechanism part of the banking union. It's to allow banks to be wound up without getting the state involved in creating problems like what we saw in Spain and Ireland. Now, treaty changes would mean this process would would take an awful lot longer. Wolfgang Schäuble said that uh, we should not make promises. We cannot keep the overly optimistic predictions about a single supervisor starting work as early as January of this year cost the EU credibility. So he's warning about not speeding too fast. Treaty changes could mean this process being delayed by years. We'll have to see how his colleagues react to that then. Now, Spain is one of the countries worst hit by the Eurozone crisis. Unemployment there is over 27%, and that's led to a drop in consumer spending. Iberian ham, which can cost more than 100 euros a kilo, is a luxury many can no longer afford. Producers are now setting their sights on the export market to grow their businesses. Solange Mujal has more. A treasure of Spanish gastronomy. In this cellar, there are more than 100,000 hams. Jamón Ibérico, or Iberian hams, come from pure breeds of Iberian black pigs. Over two years, from November to March, they're fed almost entirely on acorns, a diet that give the hams a unique, sweet flavor, a delicacy with a price tag. It can easily cost more than 100 euros a kilo. With the economic crisis, many Spaniards can simply no longer afford it. So producers are turning to exports. A few years ago, our exports accounted for 1 or 2 percent of the total, and now we are 10 to 15 percent. The goal is to keep the momentum going and get to 20 or 25 percent within 5 or 10 years. The number of Iberian pigs being reared has also dropped to just 2.5 million today. And producers have also been hit by the competition of blander, cheaper hams. So to promote their prize product and to avoid fraud, the Spanish government wants to introduce new regulations and simplify labeling. We couldn't go into international markets with eight different types of ham because that would just create huge confusion among foreign consumers who would not be able to tell the difference between one product and the other. De diferenciar y de, y de valorar unos productos y otros. The new labels will explain how the pigs have been fed and specify their breed. Producers are dreaming of trotting into new markets. Asia is already in their sights. Next to China, where new figures are from the government are painting a mixed picture of the country's economic health. Yeah, that's right. Three key indicators out from China this Monday. The most important of those is their industrial production figures, up 9.3%, but less than had been forecast. Retail sales also missing the forecast targets coming from various economists. Now, this shows that China's economic growth, which has been mammoth in recent years, but slowed down in 2012 to its slowest rate in seven years and wasn't doing too well in the first part of this year either. This is another indication that perhaps China's, uh, China's economic growth won't continue to grow at such huge rates. How are the markets reacting to that then? Weren't too pleased in the Chinese markets anyway with the, those figures from China. The uh, Shanghai Composite and the Hang Seng both closed in the red. Good news in Japan though, uh, the meeting of the G7 group of industrialised nations at the weekend said that they weren't artificially manipulating their currency by beating back those accusations of currency wars which helped the Japanese markets. In Europe, Trading has just begun. Markets are largely flat. Uh, in France, though, we've got the um, predictions from the Banque de France of uh, economic growth, 0.1%, they're saying, in the second quarter of this year. That's in line with government forecasts, but more than what the European Commissioner is saying. 
We'll move on now to take a quick look at some of the day's companies' news. And the oil firm BP says it's withdrawing staff from Libya over fears for their safety. It follows advice from the British government about recent unrest in the country. The firm wouldn't say how many staff were affected, but stressed that its office in Tripoli would remain open. The owner of fast food brand KFC says its Chinese business has been hit because of fears of the spread of bird flu. Sales fell by 36% in April, although the company says it expects the dip to be short-lived. KFC is the largest fast food chain in China, but is facing increased competition from the likes of McDonald's and Burger King. And the electronics manufacturer Samsung says it's successfully tested a super-fast 5G mobile network. The company says the fifth-generation network would allow download speeds of one gigabyte per second, which would allow users to download a whole film in an instant. Samsung is the world's number one smartphone maker. They say the technology won't be ready until 2020 at the earliest. We're going to end on an eco-friendly uh, note. There's a new invention for recycling industrial Weights. Waste that's won a $100,000 innovation prize in South Africa, and it could have a huge economic uh, benefit for businesses. Yeah, I mean, waste disposal is a really big cost for businesses. Uh, it's not the most pleasant method, however. This it's Stellenbosch, it's called. Uh, they're calling it a fly factory in South Africa. Essentially, what it uses the eggs laid by flies to recycle food and other waste uh, into reusable protein. They collect the eggs laid by the flies, put them in with the waste. They turn into larvae. The larvae eats the waste, and then they recycle the larvae into to animal feed so it comes back into the cycle all very natural perhaps not what you want to be seeing at breakfast time though i was going to say if our viewers are eating or some of them <laughs> then they might be a little bit put off their food but still but good for the <laughs> environment and good for business exactly all right thank you very much Stephen, for that look at the day's business news and thank you for watching france 24 you'll get all the latest headlines coming up in just a few minutes with stuart Noble.